My name is David Etzioni and I'm the chair of the Division of Colon Rectal Surgery here at Mayo Clinic in Arizona. I'll be talking today about a study which is about to be released in JAMA, the Journal of the American Medical Association. The study has to do with surgical outcomes within patients treated in academic hospitals within the United States. At large, within the United States, there is a very important and very new program called the National Surgical Quality Improvement Program. This is a program that's sponsored and conducted within the American College of Surgeons. Hospitals which participate in the National Surgical Quality Improvement Program, also called NISQIP, hospitals which participate in NISQIP submit a sample of their surgical patients, data regarding these patients, to a central authority and then what they get back from that centralized processing is feedback, metrics about how their patients are doing on a broad spectrum of outcomes. These outcomes include fairly minor occurrences such as urinary tract infections or um, uh, wound infections. They run the gamut all the way up to serious complications such as sepsis and mortality. So what the hospitals get back in return for participating is they get back a significant amount of information regarding how their patients are doing relative to all the other hospitals which participate in the NSQIP. Now the dream of the NSQIP is that the hospitals which participate in the NSQIP, as a result of getting back all this feedback and metrics, are better able to empower their own internal quality improvement processes. That's the promise of the NSQIP. In effect, what we've done with this study is we've asked to what extent is the NSQIP achieving that promise. In order to answer that question, we relied on data from the University Health System Consortium. The UHC is a consortium of about 120 academic hospitals, many of which perform the same types of operations that are analyzed by the NSQIP. We used data from the UHC and we compared the performance, the surgical outcomes, and hospitals which did versus did not participate in the NSQIP. Now importantly, we weren't really interested in whether or not the hospitals which participated in the NSQIP did better or worse than the hospitals which didn't participate in the NSQIP. What we were interested in was whether or not the outcomes improved over time in a way that was different between these two different types of hospitals. In general, we found in our study that surgical outcomes are improving widely over time. Rates of complications are improving in both NSQIP and non-NSQIP hospitals. Rates of serious complications are improving similarly. Rates of mortality are also improving in both NSQIP and non-NSQIP hospitals. Additionally, we found that the hospitals which participate in NSQIP had lower rates of risk-adjusted mortality than the patients treated in the hospitals which didn't participate in NSQIP. So it appears that these hospital types are fundamentally different, and we acknowledge that, but what we were seeking was information regarding whether or not those hospitals' outcomes improved over time in a way that was different. And with this study, in effect, what we found was that both NSQIP and non-NSQIP hospitals, their outcomes are improving over time in a way that's significant, but between these two groups, the way they improved was in effect similar. And uh, I'm going I'm to ask a, a two-part question. Uh, what is the takeaway from this study for uh, the health com healthcare community? I think the takeaway point from the study is that quality improvement in surgery is really hard work. There's no menu. There's no recipe you can follow to say, if you just do this, your surgical outcomes will be better. The NSQIP represents the culmination of an enormous amount of technology, methodology and work that very intelligent people have applied to improving quality improvement in surgery. With this, unfortunately, we still don't have a direct marching plan going forward. I think that when it comes to really moving the dial on surgical quality improvement, we have to start digging deeper, getting more creative, potentially becoming much more comprehensive than the approaches that we've deployed to date. And the takeaway for patients? For patients, this is a hard topic. As a patient, you're coming to the healthcare system asking, where should I go to get my operation performed? I think if there's one lesson that we've learned from surgical outcomes research, and importantly from research using the National Surgical Quality Improvement Proge Pro Program, um, 
I think that what we found is that real quality is delivered to patients through a system. If you're a patient and you're looking for a place to have your surgery or your mother's surgery, your grandmother's surgery, I think that you really want to look for a place that's going to function well as a system to provide all the elements of care that you or your loved one is going to need. National Surgical Quality Improvement Program is intended to be just that. It's meant to be a quality improvement program. Um, our study didn't find that participation in this quality impro improvement program led directly to improvements in measurable aspects of quality of care. So why, or stated alternatively, why not? The answer I think has to do with, once again, how difficult it is to move the dial with surgical quality improvement. If a surgeon wakes up in the morning and the first thing that they hear that his or her outcomes are worse on average than those of his or her peers, that surgeon is going to work really hard to improve their outcomes, but that surgeon doesn't necessarily have a distinct set of things that he or she can change in order to improve their outcomes. It's not as if there's a recipe, it's not as if there's a menu, and I think that what we really need to do is start working within our systems to try to find the right way to help that surgeon and that surgeon's patients to experience the best possible outcomes. Right now, we just don't know what to tell that person. You know, I think that one of the take-home messages of the study could be that, in general, surgical outcomes over time are improving. They're improving across the board. What is going on differently now in 2015 compared to five or six years ago? And the answer is a lot of small things, a lot of different things, which are all moving the dial once again in, in the direction of improving the patient experience of surgical care, reducing rates of surgical outcomes, which are, um, which are to be avoided. Um, it's hard to say exactly what those things are, but some of them include an increasing use of laparoscopy, increasing use of systems-based care towards the delivery of, uh, of specific processes of care. Uh, some of them have to do with a lot of the work that CMS has done in terms of trying to optimize the proportion of patients who receive indicated elements of care. Here at the Mayo Clinic, we have comprehensive efforts which are underway to try to improve the rates, the numbers, the types of care that our patients get, which is the most aligned with consensus and with evidence. I think that's happening in the Mayo Clinic in many ways which are both formal and informal. But in general, I think that one of the advantages of being in the Mayo system is that there's a top-down systems-based approach to providing a high quality of care.